Okay, before you ever turn on the power switch, I want you to make sure that the voltage coming in from your source, your power source, matches what's on the outside of the cabinet. We want to make sure that we're not going to risk any damage to the control. I'm going to show you how to hook up the power correctly. I'm going to go ahead and open up the electrical cabinet to the control and you'll see the disconnect terminal block right in behind the switch. Here we go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a voltmeter and we're going to check the power coming in. The power coming in is always at the top of the terminal block. Now this is plugged into the wall right now so these wires are hot but everything below here is, is dead because we have the switch turned off. So I do want to be careful around in this area. I got my voltmeter set to AC juice right now. And the first thing I'm going to check is the 220 volt power coming in. This machine is set up as a three phase machine right now. We got three wires coming into the top, white, red, and black. So I'm going to go ahead and check the juice between L1 and L2. L1 is the terminal the whole way on the left. And between the two legs of L1 and L2 right now, we have voltmeter says 212 volts. That's great. Now I'm going to go ahead and check L2 to L3. We're going to see what kind of power we got in between those two. Voltmeter says 213 volts. Looking good. Now you check between L1 and L3. And we have 212 volts there as well. That's looking real good. Now just because you got three phase power coming into your building doesn't necessarily mean that it's clean three phase. The power company could actually be synthesizing the third leg. If that's the case, the third leg, the, the, the voltage on that third leg is called the wild leg. It could actually vary radically. You could have anywhere from 280 to 190 volts on that wild leg. Um, to check out, to figure out which one of these legs is the wild leg, what you do is you measure from each leg to ground. Now I'm on the ground terminal with one of my voltmeter leads and the other lead is on L1 and I'm measuring 121 volts. That's what you're supposed to get. If I got 223 phase coming in and I measure from one leg to ground, I'm going to get about 110 to 120 volts, somewhere around in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the other legs and do the exact same thing. Here we go, 123 volts on L2, that's looking good. So, so far I haven't found any wild legs yet. Let's check L3. Bingo, 122 volts as well. So this is good, clean juice coming in. So it doesn't really matter where these wires are connected. Now, if I did have a wild leg, what you would find out is from one of these legs to ground, you would not get 120 volts. You would get something else. That's the wild leg. What you want to do is you make sure that that wild leg, whatever wire it is, ends up on the L1 terminal. The reason for that is the control then will isolate that wild leg from the control electronics. So you don't risk any damage to your control by having a 220 wild leg coming into your system. This particular machine is also a dual voltage input machine. So it has 110 coming in through the switch as well. So I'm going to check the top of that terminal block. And sure enough, we have 120 volts AC coming in through there as well. So that's looking real good. Centroid CNC controls run off of single phase or three phase power. Because of this fact, we strongly discourage the use of a phase converter. With a Centroid, that's an unnecessary expense and may even cause damage to your control. If you only have single phase power coming into your shop, no problem. The Centroid will run on 208 or 220 single phase. Okay, let me show you how to set it up for single phase operation. When you have single phase power input, you're only going to have three wires, two hots and a ground. Now on a three phase power input, you got three hots and a ground, just like you see here. So when we're only using single phase, two hots and a ground, we're going to connect the two hots to L2 and L3 of the disconnect block. So to set this machine up for single phase, I'm going to disconnect the wire I have here on L1. I'm going to pull it back and just cap it off with a wire nut. There we go. We're ready to run the control on 220 volt single phase. It's that easy. 
Let me plug it in and we'll check it with the voltmeter. There you go, single phase 220 connected up to the control. The Centroid control itself does not require three phase power for operation. Usually the only items on a typical milling machine that require three phase are the spindle motor and a flood pump. If you plan on running on single phase power, be sure your control is equipped with a modern AC inverter that has the ability to synthesize the third leg. These new style inverters eliminate the need for a rotary phase converter.